All right, so hello everyone. In this uh, video, we're going to be working through Griffith's quantum mechanics problem 3.7. And I didn't really know what to call uh, this problem because we're going to be working with eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. So I'm just going to call it working with all things eigen in Hilbert space. Um, but it's kind of a weird problem. So let's just dive right into it and start working through it. So for part A, uh, we are given that we have two functions. We have uh, f of x and uh, g of x, which are eigenfunctions of uh, the operator uh, q hat. And this is all just arbitrary, all right? They're both eigenfunctions of q hat uh, with the eigenvalue lambda equals q lambda for me uh just denotes a random not a random a, a generic or arbitrary eigenvalue and that's just going to be equal to q and we want to show we're asked to show that uh any linear combination of these eigenfunctions is itself an eigenfunction with the eigenvalue uh q so if you recall how eigenfunctions and eigenvalues work, if we apply our q hat operator to our eigenfunction, it should be equivalent to our eigenvalue times that function. And then the same thing goes for g. So we could say q hat g is equal to q uh, g. And in showing linear combinations, what we're essentially uh, trying to see is that uh, Q hat acting on F uh, on F plus G is equal to Q or eigenvalue F plus G. Okay, and to do that, what we're going to to, to show this, we're going to assume the following linear combination model that some constant c1 times our function f plus some constant some other constant times g is going to be our linear combination these are just arbitrary constants and what we're going to do is we're going to apply our operator to this linear combination when we do that what we're going to get is we're going to get c1 q hat f because obviously our operator is not going to be uh, you know applied to our constant plus c2 q hat of g and from these right here we know that those are equivalent to just the eigenvalue times that eigenfunction so this is actually uh, q c1 f plus q c2 g which is just q c1 f plus c2 g and there you go we've just shown that a uh, generic linear combination of our eigenfunctions f and g uh, are itself an eigenfunction of the q at operator with the eigenvalue q so now for part b we're given some actual uh functions here we're given that f of x is equal to e to the x uh, and uh, g of x is equal to e to the minus x, and that also our q hat operator is just the second spatial derivative. What we want to do is we want to show um, that these are both eigenfunctions, as we'd expect, and find uh, you know the corresponding uh, eigenvalue. And then we want to construct two linear combinations that are orthogonal. So to start things off, let's show that these are in fact um, eigenfunctions. And then we'll find our eigenvalue. Uh, so we're going to apply that q hat f is equal to q f. And so when we do that, we're going to be taking uh, d squared dx squared of uh, e to the x, which of course is just e to the x. 
and then we're going to do the same thing for our g eigenfunction uh that should be a g not an f which is d squared dx squared e to the minus x and again what we're going to end up is just getting e to the minus x out because we're going to get a double negative upon the second derivative which is just going to make this whole thing positive so right now everything looks good we have you know e to the x we started with e to the x so we have e to the minus x here and we started with e to the minus x so things look good now it's time to figure out our eigenvalue q we know that they have to be the same thing and it's pretty easy to see here from these two results that uh, q is just equal to one okay and so now we want to construct um two linear combinations that are orthogonal Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to again assume uh, the linear general linear combination model of c1 f of x plus c2 g of x. Okay, and when we plug everything in there, uh, we're going to get c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the minus x. And you already might be looking at this and saying that looks a little bit familiar. That looks like a general solution to a differential equation or, or uh, you know, that's beginning to look like something I can use uh, Euler's with. And so um, to construct two linear combinations, we're going to take a very different approach that's not mathematical. Uh, well, it is mathematical, but it's not going to be mathematical in the sense that we're going to do a ton of math to get there. I'm most comfortable working with orthogonal functions uh, when I'm dealing with sines and cosines or just trig functions in general. And so I want to get things into the form of sines and cosines. And we know from our identity that uh, cosine, that cosine of x is equal to uh, one half e to the i x plus e to the minus i x. Well, that's kind of a problem because we don't have any imaginary numbers here. And then similarly, sine of x is equal to 1 on 2i e to the i x minus e to the minus i x. And again, we have this these imaginary numbers in here that kind of complicate things. So we can't write things in terms of sines and cosines. But are there any other trig functions that we can write uh, that don't have any imaginary numbers in our exponentials. And in fact, we do have that. We know uh, that for a hyperbolic cosine or cosh of x, that is equal to one half e to the x plus e to the minus x. Hang on a minute. If we go back, that looks pretty similar to what we have right here. And so we could probably write something in terms of a cosh. So let's go back over here and let's write out C1 e to the x plus C2 e to the minus x. And we want to get it into the form of what we have right here. And we already have most of that here. For this to be true, for this to equal uh, uh, cosine, uh, hyperbolic cosine of x we require that c whoops we require that uh, c1 is equal to c2 is equal to one half if that's the case then we have uh, our hyperbolic cosine here okay now if we go back and look up hyperbolic sine we know hyperbolic sine is going to be orthogonal so cinch of x is given as one half minus e to the x plus e to the minus x okay now if we come back over here again take our model that we have right here and we want to construct a cinch out of that 
then we need C1 to equal minus one half and C2 to equal one half. If that's the case, and we just plug those in, we get a cinch and a cosh. And so what's really nice about this, if we write, you know, if we go back and look at, at, at these guys right here and, you know, write everything all out, if we look at this, all of a sudden we have a, uh, a one half F plus G. And that's our hyperbolic cosine. And then if we go over here, we have a one half minus F plus G, which is our cinch. And we know that cinch and cosh are orthogonal to one another. And so that's how you do uh, part B. It's a little bit different of an approach. It's more of one where you just kind of need to sit and think and kind of pull things up in your mind. But that's the way that I went about doing it. Um, it's a little bit different than I've seen other people do it before. That's the only reason I bring it up. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and sharing the video. And if you want to see more of this stuff, consider subscribing. Thanks, everyone.